Hello and welcome to the Daily Millwall for Friday the 7th of May 2021. Today in Millwall News, the player of the season was announced. Did you see who it was? No, I'm going to tell you now. It was Bart Biakowski and Bartos Biakowski as I kind of uh, suspected earlier in the week. Um, I'm sure they knew what the results were and um, I think on Monday or Tuesday the, the Southern News said they had a story about uh, Bart um, digging out Bristol, Bristol City and then um, they said they would be doing a full page interview with him on Thursday's paper. It's like, oh, that, that that's a bit uh, good, bit weird timing, I assume. I assume that that means Bart's won it. And it, lo and behold, he has. Um, two years running. Um, he won it last year and he's won it this year again. And there he is getting his trophy. The training ground from the MSC, uh, and this is from uh, MillFC.co.uk. It says Mill Football Club is delighted to announce that Bartos Biakowski has been named as the 2021 uh, Mill Supporters Club Player of the Season. The goalkeeper triumphed over Jed Wallace and Sean Hutchinson, who were voted into second and third places respectively to win back-to-back -back titles. So Bart was first, Jed was second, and Sean Hutchinson was third. It was my choice. I thought I wanted uh, Sean to get it, but um, did not happen. So the 34 year old stopper has kept 17 clean sheets to date in this season, going one better than last season's total. And it's been an ever present in Skybet Championship, making 48 appearances in total across the campaign. Jed Wallace has found the net 11 times in 46 appearances to claim a second successive runner up spot, while defender Hutchinson, also never present to an injury cut short his season, was at the art of the Lions' defence on 43 occasions. So, not only have we got the same winner uh, this season than last season, but the same runner up in Jed Wallace. So, there you go. May maybe, I don't know, maybe that's down to. Um, not being at the games, uh, watching the games on TV, or all, all of the games have been available um, on iFollow, which is so we've been able to see them, even if you couldn't get to the game physically before in the seasons before, you would actually have to go to the games and watch them, or and then you'll see the highlights. So the kind of player who would would win that kind of thing would be someone who looked good in the highlights. Um, uh maybe may i don't know but for 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 literally was it once a whole season this whole season and half of last season there's been no fans in the stands but we've all we've all had access well for 10 pounds a month anyway or 10 pounds a game uh had access to watch the games live so maybe that's contributed to that and we've seen the same basically the same result two years running with bart winning it and jed coming second so Maybe that's the factor, maybe not, we'll see. Um But um there was there is usually a kind of a curse uh, a so 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 to speak on the award and that the person who wins it doesn't have a good season the, the season after. I think Hutchinson won it uh was it three three years ago or, or maybe more. And the season after he had a really bad injury i think putting out the bins or something something ridiculous like that so there has been times when the player who wins it the following season doesn't do that well but we've got bart winning it last year and playing really well this season as well and picking it up again so will it be double trouble uh next year in terms of the um the the hoodoo um the curse the curse of the player of the season will it be double next year um, hope not. So, Danny McNamara, who has enjoyed a breakthrough year on the right hand side of Gary Routes 11, has been named as the young player of the season. While Biakowski and Jed Wallace have also received Junior Lions Player of the Season and PFA Community Champion Awards. So, Biakowski got the Junior Lions Award as well, and Jed Wallace got the PFA Community Champion Award. And Zach Lovelace has been selected as Schoolboy of the Year. So there you go, there you go. Um, yep, there you go. And if Bart, Bart plays in tomorrow's game, 
he will he will played every minute of this season. So let's see what he has to say. This is from LondonNewsOnline.co.uk. It says Bart Piekowski gives his reaction after winning Mills Player of the Season award for the second year in a row. Bartosz Piekowski feels honoured to have won Mills Player of the Season award for the second season running. Piekowski has kept 17 cleats this season, and that record tops last year's 16 shutouts with one game still to go. Biakowski told Millwall's website, I'm very honoured and privileged to get the award again. First of all, I'd like to say a massive thank you to the fans for voting for me. I'm really looking forward to having the fans back in the stadium. I remember the games where we did have a small percentage of the fans at the game. We walked out on the pitch and we all had massive smiles on our face. We've missed them and I'm really looking forward to having the fans back. I have had another good season. There was a couple of ups and downs, but overall, it's been a positive one for me. You always go out on the pinch pitch trying to do well, always trying to help your teammates out, and you don't think about any awards. You just think about as playing as well as you can. I came here after a tough year at Ipswich. I just wanted to be able to enjoy football again. And from day one, I've enjoyed every single training session. From the, from the day I came on to replace Frank Fielding, I've never looked back. I've tried to keep my spot in the team and I've done that. You have to put in hard work every single day, and that repays you. As a professional footballer, you want to play every single minute of every single game, and I want to play for as long as I can. It's been a crazy season with the pandemic. We started the season late and finished at the same time as normal, so there's been a lot of midweek games, but we've had a few injuries, and we've been hit by COVID as well. So to finish in the top half of the table, it's okay. We were all ambitious and we all want to take this great football club forward and we have a good platform to do that. Defensively, we are very solid. We have some top defenders and attackers in our team who have been hit with injuries. Maybe that's the key. We've missed our players for your injury. We've lacked goals this season and I'm sure the gaffer is looking to add a few more players into the squad for next year. Uh, there you go. So that's Bart on... Uh, what what he, what it means to him playing awards uh, i think the the only uh award he's probably interested in is a, is a contract because he is getting on a bit now isn't he how old is he i think he's like 32 or something he's not a spring chicken anymore or maybe he's 33 because his number's 33 i don't know Anyway, um, well, for a goalkeeper, for, for, for a goalkeeper at this level, mm, the thing is, you, you don't know these days because all the old goalkeepers get, who are half decent get snapped up by Premier League teams to be third or fourth string players that they can just stable. They just stable. And, and, and if you're that old and you, you, want, you, you want to turn the money down, so they take the money and they go and uh, they go and sit in the Premier League come and just play play in practice games to give them something some someone really decent to play against rather than like an eighteen year old youth goalkeeper who will just uh, not present any challenge to, to the first team squad. But um yeah. So Bart's one player of the season. Let's move on now to a story about a player who's the opposite of player of the season. Um you would say, I would say flop of the season, but then Troy Parrott existed. And that would be Kenneth Zahor. And this is from uh, LondonNewsOnline.co.uk, and it's exclusive. It's an exclusive. They've been wiretapping. Maybe they've hacked into the new cameras at the den, and they know what's going on. Because they are IP cameras. They are internet. So they can be hacked. They can be hacked. Um... Yeah, so Mill have opted to end the Kenneth Zahor's loan spell with the West Brom striker set to play no part in the championship finale at Coventry City tomorrow. The Danish frontman, 27, was an unused substitute in last weekend's 4-1 win over Bristol City and he's made just 10 starts during his stay in SC16. Zahor's injury just up to stay with the South London club means there is no chance of a summer deal being struck and so Lions chief Gary Rowett has decided uh, to not involve him against the Sky Blues. Zahor has not scored since the 4-1 victory against Sheffield Wednesday on February 6th. He's been unavailable for 23 of Mills Championship matchday squads. His only other goal came at Preston in October. So, but there was 
there was a story like three or four weeks ago that he was going back anyway. He was going back then. And then literally the team news for the game came out and Zahor was starting and everyone was like, what? I thought you said he was going back. Apparently um, not. Apparently not. Um, yeah, and he was named. So uh, maybe he just kicks off. Every time he's on the sus bench and he doesn't play, maybe he kicks off. Maybe that's because that's mentioned in his story there. He's saying he was an unused substitute in last weekend's 4-1 win over Bristol City. So maybe he's like, hey, um, what's happening? What's happening, bruv? If you're not going to play me, send me back. I don't give a fucking shit. Uh, maybe, maybe that's his attitude, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, so... He won't be playing in any uh, part in tomorrow's game at Coventry tomorrow. And let's have a look at that game. That game is a 12.30 kickoff tomorrow. 12.30 a.m. in the morning or just after. Midday, that is. 12.30 midday. There you go. Kickoff 12.30 midday. Saturday, the 8th of May, 2021. It's the last game of the season. And hopefully the last game where we won't have any bloody fans in the ground. Um, because they've they've just bloody installed all these ninety six cameras that'll be spying in you when you're at the game. So, yeah, they having spent all that money on cameras, they better be bloody fans in the ground next season. So, this is from whoscored.com. It's a preview of tomorrow's game. They've got a team there, but they they very rarely get it right because they have to cover all the games. So they're just kind of guessing. They don't really know. But the injuries there, you can see for both teams. Pretty um, decent players out. Um, team news. Mark Robbins could reward Jordan Shipley with a start after he scored from the bench against Huddersfield. Josh Pashk returned to action last time out. So the home side have four confirmed absentees for this final day clash. And there's nothing to play for for them. There's nothing to play for for us. It's just uh, up to uh, what each individual player has to play for, I guess. And if they can be bothered to, to do anything. Uh, Gary Rout can make just one change for the trip to St Andrews with Ben Thompson replacing Mason Bennett in midfield. Versatile defender Murray Wallace has been ruled out of Saturday's game with a muscle injury. So, moving on to the head-to-head -head before we go back and look at the prediction. Um, last six meetings at Coventry. Um, so, a third... Uh, no draws, so that means tomorrow's game is probably going to be a draw because we're long overdue. And we are draw kings, we are draw kings of the championship. Um, so the, we've won a third and lost two thirds. Actually, got a losing record in the last six games uh, away at Coventry. And look, oh my god, look at this! Every other game has been a red card for me. A wall in 05 in 11. In 16, red card from your wall, three red cards from your wall. And someone did mention that the referee selected is, is a bit of a. Um, he's done about a dozen Coventry games and they haven't lost in a single one of them yet. So if you're looking for gambling, maybe, maybe, uh, Mill to have a red card. And that would be a kicker as well, wouldn't it? Does, I assume that carries over to next season, which will be a bit of a cunt. Um, let's have a look. So here we are in a table. Like I said, nothing to play for. Ten points difference. Um, a lot of draws between both teams. Seventeen for us, thirteen for them. Uh, but we've won a few more games than them. Only two. Not 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 that much in it. But our defence is solid. We've only conceded forty six uh, goals. They've conceded sixty. They're on minus seventeen goal difference. So there you go. But the recent form. Look at that. They've actually um. Well, let's bring up the form table and, and have a look. You can see they're actually 12th. Um, so in the last six games, playing better than us. Scored 8, conceded 8. We've scored 7, conceded 10. Um, and they have one more win than us. And we have one more loss than them. So there you go. Um, let's have a look at this and go... So, yeah, 
you can see here Coventry lost to Preston at home last time uh, 1 0. They beat Barnsley at home. Um, Millwall's away travels lost to Watford, drew at Brentford, won at Stoke. So, could go either way, could go either way. With that, them, them being in a better form, them having the, the um, upper hand over us in terms of. Um, matches played at their place, but they're playing at Birmingham, aren't they? They're not playing at um, they're not playing in Coventry. They're not playing on Highfield Road or the Rico State, that's the um Rico Arena, whatever it's called now. Um, so you can see here all the um strengths and weaknesses for the various teams. I'm not going to read them all out because life is too short. Let's go back to the prediction and uh. Have a look at what they say. What do they say? They say Coventry won. Millwall won. Okay. Substitute Jordan Shipley gave Coventry a lead against Huddersfield with just 20 minutes left to play last weekend. But the Midlands club couldn't hold on for a victory. The Sky Blues have claimed 10 points from their last five league outings heading into the final day. Millwall produced the perfect response to their downturn in form last weekend, hammering Nigel Pearson, and sorry Bristol City side 4-1. In South London, that result ended a run of four league games without a win, moves the visitors up to 11th place. Yeah, but here's the thing, I think that that was more, that was more down to Bristol City being very, very, very bad. Rather than Mill being very, very, very good. So. We will see. Let's move on now to the other guy who makes predictions, David Pratt at Sky. As you can see, he's probably more interested in the um, relegation scrap between the three, technically four clubs, but basically three. And here we go. Was there selling the? Um, I don't. Here's the thing. I don't know why we have to kick off at twelve thirty as well. Because nothing else is riding on the league. I don't understand that. I understand why these games will be at 12.30, but I don't understand why we have to kick off at 12.30. It's just a bit of a nonsense, I guess. Um, if you watch, I'm not sure, but sometimes when they do these things, they show the goals. Um, if you've got Sky and you're not buying the I follow, if you watch one of these games, they might show you the goals as they go in at the other grounds, even if they've got nothing to do with this relegation battle. So that might be a thing. Um, but yeah, let's just skip past that. And so here we go. So he predicts Coventry one, Millwall nil. And as you can see from all all the um, predictions there, they're all pretty um, boring and bog standard. And he hasn't taken into effect um, the last games of the season, which I told you last weekend. I predicted before the game that I thought it would be four one or five one to Millwall because. Uh, end of the season, crazy scores are coming up. Uh, he doesn't predict a single one here. And I think, I think, um, I think we could get a draw tomorrow. I think we could. Uh, it's supposed to be raining. It's supposed to be pissing down with rain. Um, early Saturday morning. It might be gone by the time the game kicks off. <laughs> But I think it will be a draw. So crazy draw. Have we had a? Oh, we haven't had any draws in the last um, six games against Coventry, have we? No. We've got a lot of two ones there. So maybe, 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 maybe I'm thinking two two draw. Maybe three three two two or three three. Like I said, crazy, crazy, crazy end of end of season uh, scores. F two, two or three, three. That's what I reckon. Maybe even uh, sending off for Millwall because if the pattern is, look, we've got we've got uh, red card, no red card, red card, no red card, red card. The last game was no red card. So the pa if the pattern processes. As it is, it should be a red card in this game tomorrow. 
So, for us, maybe a red card for them as well, but I reckon it's going to be a crazy game. A red card for us, and maybe 2 2 draw, hopefully. Maybe 3 3. Anyway, that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Remember, it's 12 30.